Okay, oh, it's been a day. It has... It has been a day. It's been a couple of days, but it's been a day today. Specifically, today has been a day which was... Boy, that, that sure was a... That sure was a day. It's been a stressful day. It's been a day of this stuff that needs to get done, and a lot of it, and things are piling up in front of me, and it's hard to keep up with everything, and more stuff to... Yeah, it's been one of those kinds of days, right? Um, And, like, God, the comment section on... The shorts channel right now is a little bit uh, kind of my own fault. I chose a topic that was going to generate a bunch of tedious comments, but wow, was there a lot of them. Uh, stressful to moderate, but anime helps, um, and we shall watch anime together. So, uh, if you've not been along to one of these anime watch-along reaction things before, the way it works is in the top left corner, you'll see a timestamp, and that timestamp tells you where I am in the episode. And the idea is that I'm going to say three, two, one play, and we're going to press play at the exact same time, and we're going to be synced up, you and I. So it's going to be like we're sitting on the couch together watching uh, the anime, and I'm going to say stuff about, oh, cool, that thing happened, I was thinking, occasionally. But then also occasionally, I will say three, two, one, pause, because I have something I want to say that I can't just say while the anime is playing, because then we're going to miss half of it. Uh, so I'm going to want to pause it, and you're going to have to pause at the same time, and then when I'm done saying the thing I want to say, I'll say three, two, one, unpause, and I'll try and keep the pace reasonable on that. And then we keep watching the thing together. And it's like a social thing. Like, for me, it's just an excuse to exercise my my ADHD um, by directing my scattered attention towards something so that I can actually finish watching a goddamn anime episode without checking Twitter 450 times or whatever. Oh, I don't check Twitter anymore. It's Blue Sky now. But you get what I mean. Uh, but for you, hopefully, an interesting, fun experience of, like, watching anime along with some guy who has opinions about things. Yay! Isn't that fun? That might be fun. Uh, the timer on Delicious and Dungeon here is a timer that shows the amount of time that's left because that's how it works on Netflix. Someone pointed out to me that I should probably have a timer that, that imitates that. Um, so that's what, what's on there now. If that's very inconvenient to a lot of people, let me know, but since it's on Netflix, uh, that's how we're going to do it. So, Delicious and Dungeon Episode 3, Living Armor, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. ba -doom. Still love that mushroom. Like, the way it's animated, it's just good. I think it's like a, like, hmm. Is it on threes or is it on twos? I think it's on threes. Hmm. I am kind of curious about... I've mentioned this already, right? Like, but, And I'm sorry to talk over the good song, but the way the characters are displayed as literally bigger than their worlds is interesting. But also at rest, right? Like, very specifically, they're all shown to be sort of calm, relaxed, at rest. Just staying in, in whatever place they're in. And the character design in this series is just good. Like, it's varied, it's interesting, it's, like, not over-detailed in the way that some fantasy anime tends to be. It's distinctive. It seems personal to the characters. Like, ah. Like, even that guy in that one shot there over on the right with the tattoos across his back, I was like, oh, shit. What's up with them? They seemed interesting. I've also heard that the dub of this thing is really good, and I, I have been tempted to try it out for an episode or two. Ooh, good expressions in that shot.
<laughs> There's definitely a problem. I like their noses so much. Oh, hello. Ooh, nice little parallax pan. It makes them scary immediately, right? Oh! Oh, okay. Well, that's not good. Oh, God. God, that thing is well animated. Like, trying to animate a thing like that, a rigid structure like that, it's... it's hard. Ooh, boy. I wonder how board driven this show is. There's definitely some model differences in this episode. Like, I guess there must have been a different lead on it. There, that pan is good. Oh, that's good. Oh, my God. Oh, that's... <laughs> okay. This is fucking Sakuga. Okay, three, two, one, pause. Scene is over. I, mm, <laughs> I struggle to explain. Oh, I'd have to do a whole animation breakdown on that. Cause, but, okay, so, in animation, right, when you're animating human characters, like, or, or like, they, uh, living characters, characters who have, like, like, biological physicality to them, you can do all kinds of cheats, right? Like, you can do all kinds of little, 
Little things, like little little corner cuts, you can go off model in all kinds of wobbly, weird ways that are like... It doesn't make animation easy, right? But it's like, you can, you can cut a bunch of corners, you can make things a little bit easier for yourself in a lot of things, especially transitional and in-between shots, where it's like, it's fine. That's a lot harder to do when you're animating things which are rigid structures, right? Um, like, in the sense that it's easier to animate a bag of flour moving around than it is to animate a car driving, right? Like, to the point that even Disney, like, in the uh, 101 Dalmatians movie, to do Cruella de Vil's car, which is, like, this really complex bit of, like, technical animation, they built a physical model of the car and filmed it moving in the ways they wanted it to move in the movie. And then the animators just kind of traced, it's more complicated than that, but the animators basically traced it at, at like uh, traced over footage of an actual physical model. Cause that was so much easier than having to hand animate the damn thing um, in the traditional way. And in most modern anime nowadays, when there is an object that is of like high technical complexity that needs to be animated in motion, like for example, cars, they will do that with 3D, right? Like, that, that's usually where 3D gets deployed in most 2D anime nowadays. It's, like, stuff like cars, any, like, like, like trains, things that are, like, complex, that are rigid, and that have to be moved in, in like, three-dimensional space, like, in a really rigid way. Because you can't do all those same cheats with a rigid thing. Like, for example, a suit of armor. That's one of the things that makes, like, animating, like, th that would also be a thing that's difficult about animating. Laios is that he's wearing this fucking suit of armor that needs to be very carefully moved around, which is part of why I was so pleased with the fight scene there. Um, but then to animate the fucking living armor guys, like these full knight dudes, hand animated, that smoothly, and both communicating that their movement is stiff and kind of janky and disjointed, but also that they are like kind of swift and creepy and lethal. And then, like, the, and it's not just that they do that, it's also that the, the ways that these guys move, there's, oh, there was some cool, like, the ways that they posture and the way that they catch their weight and shit like that, oh, there's just some good shit in there. Like, like where they've really sort of, the animator has clearly spent some time thinking about, like, how, how am I going to make this thing move with personality? Because, like, they didn't animate them like just robots, right? Like, they didn't animate, like, sort of moving stiffly, like, very pre-programmed straight motions. There was a lot of wobbling. There was a lot of, like, sort of fumbling around for the helmet and shit like that. Like, that's that sort of was all over their animation. Ah, oh, that's very good. Oh, that was very good. And Senshi, like, when he was do running in, like, with that axe swoop from down below and, like, uh, oh, 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 that was good. Oh, that was just a joy. Because, like, I know this is not, like, Sakuga in the sense of, like, that you usually see, like, this incredibly difficult, like, highly skilled shot with the camera whirling around and, like, all kinds of shit happen. It was just, oh, that was just really fucking good animation. That was just such good craft. Such good craft. Oh, this is a delight. Oh, I'm so happy. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna stop now. Uh, three, two, one, unpause. <laughs> little detail, Senshi's just polishing his pan while the others are talking. Good character moment. He would do that because he cares about his cooking. Note the use of dramatic lighting there.
the lighting in general in this episode is really interesting. <laughs> like the attention paid to Senshi, like how he moves a lot more, like, stubby than the rest of them. That's 3D. They're using 3D for the doors there. Which is sensible, right? Oh, boss armor. <gasps> Ornstein! <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, it's so good! Oh, fuck me, that's good. How are you putting your entire fucking Sakoka budget in this fucking episode? Oh, that complete swap and ace that- Holy shit! Oh, see what I was saying about you can cheat, you can go wobbly when you're animating human ca- Oh, ho, ho, ho. Holy shit, this episode is good. I'm seeing a lot more of the classic trigger style in this episode, too. <laughs> Since she gets all the panty shots.
Liars, maybe not now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Again, the way she pulls him along. Ah, it's so good. Character in motion. Yeah. personality and the motion that's something i miss so often in anime is that individual sense of an aesthetic of motion Oh, I'm getting hungry again. Haha, <laughs> Ornstein! <laughs> I don't even like shellfish at all, but... <laughs> There's a lot more trigger in this animation.
Marcel. Look, the way the animator is using her ears. Like the little wobbles, they- Oh, that's so good! Two, one. Okay, three, two, one, pause. There's a little detail about Senshi. You see the way that he, even though his like he's got the shadow from his helmet like sort of permanently over his face in a lot of shots, but his eyes light up inside of them. That to me, for some reason, that specific thing of like the big round eye with the pinprick pupil that sort of pokes out through shadows through everything. Something about that is so late 90s to me. This, like, I, and I can't even express why exactly, but something about that ha has that. And I think what I mean when I say that is like thinking about it more clearly, trying to think about it more clearly, is that there was a time when anime had much more of a cartoon influence. Um... By which I mean, like, like classic cartooning, Disney cartooning. Um, and that, like, and that has gone through waves, like, ups and downs. Like, as if you're anime aficionado, you might know, like, that Astro Boy, arguably the grandfather of all modern manga and, and anime, like, was heavily inspired by Pinocchio. Like, specifically, a lot of his character design was taken by, from Pinocchio by Disney, right? Um, and that, that Jessica was a huge Disney fan. And, like, the Disney influence has always been there in anime and manga, right? But it's an influence of of a style of cartooning. A st it's solid drawing is what it is. I'm sorry, I just, I looked at Senshi's helmet in this shot, like the way that the, like the way that, that, that the horns are rendered, like the way the foreshortening is handled, as well as the, like the, 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 sh the shape and volume of the helmet. And it's like, oh, they're doing fucking solid drawing. That's why. That, that's why, oh, that's why it feels that way. It's because, okay, so, I mean, it's like, and I don't, all animators practice solid drawing. It's not a thing of like, but, but, but they're doing a style of solid drawing. Like, look at his helmet. Like, I think, hmm, I'm, tr it, this is just emotional, immediate reactions of me trying to think through what I'm feeling. Because I'm feeling feelings in response to these images, right? Like, I'm, I'm getting, like, I'm pinging with, with, like, recognition on things. There's things that are coming back to me. There are things that are, like, experiences that I'm relating back to and, like, like feelings and vibes, and I'm trying to f figure out the rational basis for them right now. But the way that Senshi's helmet is drawn in this particular shot that we happen to be holding on, that is pure... That is pure 90s Disney original animation. Like, specifically the way that it handles and stylizes volume and form... The way, like, uh, specifically the way that it's using the shadows and the, that is so much, feels so much 90s Disney original TV anime. I'm thinking specifically like stuff like the Gummy Bears, um, some episodes of DuckTales, and the Moomins. Oh, that's where I'm getting the fucking, right, that's where the eyes thing is coming from, because, like, the Moomins uh, was... A cartoon that was like remains massively popular um, in both Japan and Scandinavia, but in the '90s especially, there was a, on TV a Finnish Japanese co-production of the Moomin Trolls that was a cartoon that was like my first exposure to anime because it was like it was a Japanese-made animation and it used all the visual language of anime. And that that thing Senshi is doing with his with his eyes that poke out through the shadows that's very much that vibe from the Moomin Troll cartoon from the '90s. That's where I'm getting it. That's where it's from. That's why. That's why. That's the time period that's pinging in my head. But uh, the thing about like the the way they handle rendering objects, and that's true of the fucking night armors as well. As you'd have seen it, that is such a 
like the 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 the, the, the animation discipline. I think this is remember. This is just reactions. I haven't researched this. I think the animation craft that they're applying, like the animation technique, is classic, like classic Disney solid drawing. And like over top of that, like with with like with the anime movement aesthetic and the anime motion aesthetics, and <clears throat> and no, but but I think it is old school classic solid drawing, which is a different vibe from, like, um, I I haven't watched the newest episodes of One Piece, but like One Piece up through the Wano arc, specifically, is a very different. Like if, it's the anime I've been watching the most recently. Um, One Piece specifically, like if you pay attention to the way One Piece in the Wano arc, right? Like, it handles solidity, motion, stylizing volumes. It's a very different style. Like, it's it's very much, like, that's a much more modern, I would say, um, animation style of handling that with, but but this thing is, I think, I need, oh man, I need to research this. I need to know who the board artist was. I need, to, is it, who's the lead, at, like, because that's the thing, I'm noticing that this episode is stylistically noticeably different from the other two. And I'm wondering if that is because there was a different lead animator on this one, or a different animation director. Because definitely the action scenes here had a different feel than the ones in episode two. Not worse. I like it better because I have my biases, but like, not worse, but it was a different stylistic approach, I feel. I need to go back and watch episode two. Fuck me. Shit. Oh my god, this show is so fucking good. <laughs> oh, my animation nerd heart is so happy. Oh my god. This is, if I, when I do the rest of this, it's gonna, just gonna be this, I guess. Like, if this, if they keep doing this to me, you're gonna get a lot more of this, me just sitting here for like 20 minutes. Gushing over a... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, fuck. Okay, uh, let, let's finish the episode. Let's finish the episode. I'm, I'm gonna try and break out of... Oh, fuck. I'm gonna have to do videos about this, aren't I? Shit, I might. Fuck. I hate... I don't want to do videos about anime on the main channel. It's so fucking dangerous and risky, but okay. <sighs> Three, two, one. Unpause. Elias in the background. <laughs> Good. Oh, right, I forgot about that part. Oh! The rendering. The way they used dramatic lighting on him to sell the shock he was feeling in that moment. Good. Good. Oh, they go downstairs differently, all of them. Ah, oh, I like that. Oh, this anime is so good! Fuck me! Ah, uh, man, I'm not even, like... The story is fine. Like, the story is good. The story I know this because I've read Delicious and Dungeon. Like, the story is a good story. But, oh my... Like, I was so worried about how it would translate to animation. I was so worried about it. I... I I, I was so sure that it was going to be, like, a shitty cash-in. Like, even though... I, I knew Trigger was in charge of it, so it was going to be good, right? It was going to be decent, but I thought... I mean, it's Studio Trigger, right? I still love the character design on those ladies in the bar. It's Trigger, right? So, like, maybe like, I had a fear that it was going to be too kill la kill, that it was going to be too, like, over the top and, and, and like, wild in its animation. It's like, I was worried it was going to do the Gainax thing, right? Like, I was worried it was going to pull from Darling and the Franks and, like, like... And pull from kill la kill and pull from, um... 
pandy and stocky. Like, pull from that side of the animation aesthetic spectrum. But the fact that they're going back to... They're drawing on, like, very... As far as I can tell, anyway, old classic animation styles. Oh, <laughs> I'm just being fed so well. Like, they seem to be drawing on really classic animation disciplines. And it's, oh my god. Like, they're feeding my nostalgia, obviously, right? Like, they're, they're, they're calling back to aesthetics of times past. In a way that, that definitely baits old people like me into being like, Oh, I remember that from when I was a kid. Right? That's definitely there. I'm not going to say that it isn't. But oh, there's also... There's also just fucking craft here, man. Uh, I need... To, I, I might need to find an editor who works with other Anitubers and, like, who knows how to cut and edit around, like footage to avoid getting you know assassinated by the copyright bots because I oh, I really want to I really want to do a close examination of that I want to do some research I want to find out I want to find out who the like if if this show is particularly board led or if it's like if if there's like a lead animator in charge of like the look and aesthetic because like because this feels a lot like this entire episode was done by a couple of keyframe animators with some really, really fucking talented in-betweeners. I don't know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Fuck. I did not. I, I honestly can't express to you how fucking pleased I am with this. The, the way this anime handles its... Okay, hang on. It, it, the reaction is sort of over now, right? Like, if, if you just wanted my reaction to watching the episode through for the first time, you can turn off now. It's fine. I just... I just need to... I just need to... Okay, uh, the battle scene, the first one... with the crew... and the living armors... Okay, I'm just... Okay, we're at 1908 left in the episode. So if you want to follow me along here, three, two, one, on pause. Like the pan that they do to make the armor is like the... reveal their numbers and make them look kind of freaking weird. That's good. But also... Like that, like that, like fucking the... You see the way that it sort of stumbles forward and like... And then the sense... Like that... Like, ah! <laughs> okay, so, like, he runs forward, right? And his weight, he sort of almost totters a little because he has the axe on the right, and that's, like, dragging him down. So he, like, he sort of, like, leans over. He's, he lifts left leg off the floor, lets the axe drag him down, and then he pulls his entire weight back over to the left and pulls the axe up and does the thing. That, mm, that's such a, because the axe is really heavy, right? And he's a very short dude. And so in order to get, like, a big swing art and get all the power out of it, he, he like, he, he does odd things with his posture and his balance in order to really make the fucking hit. Oh, that's so good. And I'll take, okay, I'm pausing again. I'm just yeah, uh, trying to sync up with me right now. It's probably pointless because I'm just pausing all over the place. That little thing when Lyos is like, like wiggling the head off of the thing and like the armor is falling back and like the fucking they were rendered the inside ridges of that fucking armor falling backwards and like a, a convincing 3d motion that's fuck you how the fuck are you doing that oh and ref referring back to the thing i was talking about how you can make a lot of cheats and a lot of cuts and you can get away with a bunch of stuff um when you're animating human characters that you can't necessarily always get away with when you're animating very rigid things, pay attention to Lyos's armor in this shot. How, fit, like how perfect it is in, it, in the, like its directionality and shape and volume, compared to his face and she looks uh, uh, face like the halfling. I keep forgetting his name. Um, compared to that with his face, how stylized and how how cartoony he is in this shot relative to the care that's taken to render Lyos's armor, for example, and indeed the living armors themselves, right? Like, the, the places where you can cut corners and the places that you can't. Uh, 
I just... Again, the motion aesthetic of how that fucking living armor moves! It's okay, the little groping for the helmet, and the helmet, like, wobbling a little bit in response to being touched, and then the helmet on. And I, oh, <laughs> just, I am so happy. It's just good craft. It's good, appealing, fun, highly effective animation. And the way they all run differently, they each have their own running style and like the armor getting up and like, oh, <laughs> did I just swallow a fly? What the fuck? <coughs> I think I did. Ah. Ew, fucking hell. Oh, that's gross. I need water. Anyway, sorry. I just needed to watch that. I needed to watch that fight scene one more time because, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I know I didn't, I don't think I necessarily had that many interesting things to say. Like a lot of my reaction was just me cackling and being happy. But oh my God, I did not expect much out of this episode. Because it was, because I, I remember the chapter of the story vaguely, which is just that the party comes upon the living armors. They fight them a little bit and they say, oh, they're mollusks inside. Like, I remembered that bit. I didn't remember it being very interesting, but just the animation of this series has added so much which is the thing right like that 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 series um that get animated like like really good manga that gets animated right usually it makes compromises and loses a lot of its artistic uniqueness right like usually character designs get sort of smoothed down so that they're more standard and so that they're like easier to replicate and animate and so that they fit into templates better and like uh really complicated action shots and shit like that like maybe some of them get the sakuka treatment but a bunch of it gets sort of like like skipped past a little bit it doesn't quite get rendered with the same fidelity yeah that's normal right like like the fucking the the one punch man anime was an amazing thing that like first season anyway um was fucking amazing like they they went above and beyond they did something incredible with it but they were never gonna match yusuke murata and his team for the sheer level of fucking cinematic detail that they put into their drawings right like it was never gonna be as good as the drawings every frame of the fight was never gonna be as good this anime has fucking managed to because, like, Delicious in Dungeon isn't an action story, really. Like, it's not really a, a, a shonen in that sense of, like, being sort of interested in the in the deep mechanics of fighting and shit like that. It's, like, it's a story. Uh, uh, manga, right? It's a, it's a manga about, like, these characters and doing the story. What this thing has added is, like, that sense of, like, physical danger and fighting and... And, like, that attention to... That's the other thing it's adding is, like, the body language of the characters, which is the thing that so much anime can't really do because they have don't have the budget for it or the time. Like, so much anime doesn't have the budget or time to, like, create highly individualized specific character animation for, like, when some characters are just fucking running or when a guy is running forward and swinging an axe, right? In most action shots, in most shonen anime, like most most action anime and shit like that, when a guy is like running forward and doing fighting stuff, he just he just does fighting stuff, right? Like he he does the motions and the movements. And this is like the other anime that 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 I'm, that I'm sort of reacting to, um, like solo leveling, right? Most of the action shots in that one, like when one character is swinging a sword or a weapon around or fighting, it's not like they have a, a unique motion aesthetic to at least not yeah, I've only watched episode one so like maybe that happens later but they don't have a like a unique motion to them where like this person throws a punch completely differently from how the other guys like throws a punch it's like there are standard ways to do this standard ways to communicate these things like often drawn a lot from like um like rpgs and video games and shit like that this anime it's like a lot of care and attention is paid to giving each character their own aesthetic of motion, their own aesthetic of movement, their own way of moving through the world that the other characters don't have. Like, that doesn't look like it could be shared by 150 other NPCs quite easily, but like what, one that's specific to their personality and to their bodies. And that, oh my god, that I'm so happy. <laughs> it's just so nice. I just, because like I'm the guy who sits around noticing that shit, right? And being delighted by it, like... <laughs> I have ADHD, not autism. Leave me alone, but there's definitely some overlap in traits, and this is the thing that I am autistic about, I guess. Because, oh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, fuck. I wasn't expecting to love this anime so much. Again, like, we don't... Like, I, this is the other thing. I don't know if it's the, because there's a specific animation director and, like, a, a lead animator and, like, a, a specific team working on this episode who were, like, the A-team, for whatever reason, working on this one, who were, like, the, the super... Be because I will say, I think the ep animation in this episode was better than the other two. Like, noticeably better. Um, but if, like, I get one or two more episodes from this team... Like, just this team doing, like, one or two more episodes... I will be so happy. And even if I don't, if I get the people who did <clears throat> episode one and two, I'll still be happy. But this team, like, the people did this. I want to know who they are. I need to research that. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. I've, I have reacted to the thing. L l let that be sufficient. Thank you for hanging out and listening to me <laughs> go feral um, about a fairly low-stakes scene in a fantasy anime. Uh... Subscribe, I guess. Do I want to do that on this channel? I don't want to do the YouTuber thing. I really do. I have gotten used to doing it on my main channel and shit, and my Let's Play channel, but this one, is so, it's such a small channel. I don't want to do YouTuber shit. It's, it's subscribe if you fucking want to or whatever. I don't care. doesn't matter to me. Um, but, but, but if you want to keep enabling me to just watch Delicious and Dungeon and, and, and be a freak about it, stick around, I guess. Bye.